Antarctic Expedition, a triumph of exploration at the South Pole. During the early 20th century, a compelling tale of exploration unfolded as two exceptional individuals, Roald Amundsen and Robert Falcon Scott, embarked on separate expeditions, vying to conquer the elusive South Pole. Their relentless pursuit to be the first to reach the southernmost point on Earth led to a courageous and challenging journey, marked by both triumphs and tragedies, leaving a lasting impact on the history of polar exploration. Antarctica is the world's southernmost, windiest, highest, coldest, driest, and iciest continent. The continent's size is about 14.2 million square kilometers, 5.5 million square miles. Both Roald Amundsen from Norway and Robert Falcon Scott from Britain led expeditions to the South Pole, mere weeks apart. Roald Amundsen, born on July 16, 1872, in Borge, Norway, was an accomplished polar explorer and skilled navigator. Prior to his pursuit of the South Pole, he had already achieved renown as the leader of the pioneering expedition that successfully navigated the Northwest Passage, connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. On October 19, 1911, the expedition commenced with five men, four sledges, and 52 dogs embarking on their journey. Despite the challenging conditions, they managed to cover over 15 nautical miles, 28 kilometers, daily and reached their 82 degrees south depot on November 5th. To mark their route, they built cairns made of snow blocks at three-mile intervals. As supplies dwindled, the team had to make the difficult decision of sacrificing the weakest dogs. They also offered aid to Amundsen's team, enabling them to travel approximately 20 miles per day. On December 14, 1911, around 3 p.m., the party reached the vicinity of the South Pole. There, they planted the Norwegian flag and christened the Polar Plateau, King Haakon VII's Plateau. They have effectively managed to return safely to their base camp. On the other hand, Fortune has not been so kind to British Royal Navy officer and explorer, Robert Falcon Scott. He embarked on his second Antarctic expedition known as the Terra Nova Expedition, named after the ship that transported his team. Similar to Amundsen, Scott also selected the Ross Ice Shelf as his starting location. Scott's expedition to the South Pole was filled with numerous challenges, including harsh weather, challenging terrain, and logistical issues. After an arduous trek, on January 17, 1912, Scott and four of his men finally reached the South Pole, only to discover that Amundsen's Norwegian flag had already been planted there. In the initial phases of Scott's expedition, the team employed ponies and motor sledges, both of which proved unsuitable for the demanding surroundings. The ponies succumbed to fatigue and necessitated eventual euthanization, whereas the motor sledges demonstrated their unreliability. Their prolonged journey caused problems as the summer season was drawing to a close, resulting in plummeting temperatures. During the pivotal return journey of Scott's expedition, significant shortages of food and fuel were encountered. Inadequate planning and the lack of properly established supply depots rendered his team susceptible to unforgiving conditions. Scott's team had to travel in worsening conditions due to his delayed start. The temperatures were plummeting and the daylight was diminishing as they traveled south. As the expedition persevered, the evident toll on their physical well-being grew more pronounced. The initial casualty of these harsh conditions was Edgar Evans, whose demise occurred on February 17, 1912. This event marked the onset of a sorrowful sequence of occurrences. The surviving members contended with frostbite, malnutrition, and the psychological burden imposed by their situation. Notably, Lawrence Oates, confronted with his own waning strength, departed the tent with renowned resolve to aid his companions, articulating the poignant statement, I am just going outside and maybe some time. His self-sacrifice was an endeavor to bolster the prospects of survival for others. Tragically, Scott, Wilson, 
and Bowers perished in a tent only 11 miles away from a supply cache that could have potentially saved them. Many months later, their bodies were discovered, but by that time, Amundsen had already returned to Norway, engaged in a lecture tour. The impact of the South Pole expeditions led by Roald Amundsen and Robert Falcon Scott was substantial. Their journeys played a crucial role in enhancing the precision of Antarctic mapping by collecting valuable data. This data not only improved the accuracy of the continent's coastline and geography, but also contributed to refining the overall cartography of the region. Both expeditions carried out meteorological observations, gathering information about atmospheric pressure, wind behaviors, temperature, and other factors. These observations yielded an important understanding of Antarctica's harsh climate and added to our comprehension of polar meteorology. The data they acquired aided scientists in grasping the glacier movements, ice feature formation, and the broader behaviors of ice sheets. These journeys also encompassed investigations of the Southern Ocean and adjacent waters, gathering information on ocean currents, temperatures, and marine organisms. These ventures offered a chance to evaluate and enhance equipment, including sleds, attire, and scientific tools, which subsequently influenced both polar exploration and research endeavors. The South Pole expeditions led by Roald Amundsen and Robert Falcon Scott played a pivotal role in progressing our comprehension of the worldwide environment, particularly concerning climate, weather trends, and polar ecosystems. These journeys meticulously recorded indigenous wildlife and ecosystems, delivering initial understanding into how organisms adapt to exceedingly cold conditions. The documentation of penguin colonies, seals, and other creatures added to our insight regarding the strategies life employs to flourish in such demanding surroundings. This awareness holds wider significance for comprehending biodiversity and adaptability within evolving ecosystems. Both Roald Amundsen and Robert Falcon Scott have left a profound legacy in the field of exploration and have significantly impacted Antarctica itself. One enduring symbol of their contributions is the Amundsen-Scott South Pole Station, a scientific research facility operated by the USA, situated at the South Pole.